What's up everyone, welcome to Hi-Fi Turtle where we talk about everything audio. Today I'm going to be talking about the Benchmark DAC3L and the Benchmark LA4. I wanted to do a funny kind of weird skit but I struggled to think of something good for this particular product and I thought about it and I said well this product is Benchmark. It's the Benchmark in excellence, the Benchmark in audio. So it's a super serious real video. Just like the Benchmark products, no fluff, no gimmicks. Let's get right to it. Stay tuned. All right, Benchmark DAC 3L LA4. DAC 3L, $1,900. LA4, $2,500. Remote, not included. Extra hundred bucks. I know that sucks, but extra hundred bucks. Actually a pretty nice remote. Although weirdly enough, this remote is made in Korea where all the benchmark products are made in the USA. So I don't know, but at the same time, benchmark is probably the only company that I can think of that is audiophile oriented that has not raised their prices by more than 10% within the last two years. The DAC three series did go up, but the LA four and the HB two power amplifier have not which is amazing because in this climate that we're living in, it's really unusual to not see a price increase of 10, 20, even 30%, or in the case of Focal, the sky's the limit when it comes to price increases, I don't know. But I like Benchmark as a company because they only really offer three core products and they just do them extremely well and they're high value products with no BS attached. They're not extremely heavy, they're not extremely flashy, there's not a lot of marketing hype with them. They really just are high performing, well measuring, good sounding products. And the praise that they get from both subjectivists like Serifile and objectivists like Audio Science Review goes to show how uniting I guess these products are, I don't know. Benchmark does a lot of stuff that I think is above and beyond your typical audio company. They publish a blog that has a lot of technical information and explains a lot of the reasons why they have made particular design choices in building their products. And in some cases, when I'm reading this blog or certain things that they posted online and comments and responses to other people, I'm kind of thinking, they're kind of letting the secrets out. They're just telling you how to make good products. And I guess that doesn't bother them at all because their reputation is so great and it goes to show you why. And one of the things that's very odd, I guess, or not atypical of an audio company is the quality of their manual. And I know this is a weird thing to say, but this man, this is the, the, the DAC3 uh, manual. This thing is 71 pages long. It's an eight and a half by 11 book. It's a, it's a book. It's literally a book. It's not this little, pamphlet that is like only this big like a couple inches vertically and horizontally it's a full on page and it goes into great detail about how to operate and use your product i mean there's colored pictures of the circuit board and like how to like put the jumpers on and, and other settings how to upgrade the firmware if you want to do that measurements of the product I mean, this is a fully fledged booklet of what you're getting when you buy a Benchmark product. I mean, they even put the certification for FCC and CE in here. I mean, who does that? No one does that except for Benchmark. That's gonna lower the resale value of my product. Anyway, so I kind of got into the Benchmark family by accident. I actually won the DAC3 in their 2019 Exponent giveaway. And it was for the DAC3B, but the deal was that you could put the value of the DAC3B towards any of the other benchmark products. So I ended up going with the DAC3L because I figured if I wanted to go for a power amplifier down the road, which I eventually did with the Hegel H20, which I love, I could do that with the DAC3L where I couldn't do that with the DAC3B, which is just a standalone DAC and does not have the gain stage preamp. And for the longest time, I was thinking to myself, why would anyone get the LA4 when the 3 L or the 3HGC, which has the headphone amp, has the preamp built in. And John from Benchmark actually went into detail a little bit about 
what advantages using the LA4 over the 3L's internal preamp has on a form post. And basically it was an improvement in signal to noise ratio. And I think there was also some impedance matching that the preamp does that the 3L does not do. There was some you know, technical jargon, but it didn't seem to me like there was a gigantic leap in performance when it came to using the LA4 over the DAC3L. So this had me scratching my head and confused for a long time, and lots of people online were saying very positive things, but people online say very positive things about very stupid things. So I didn't know what to believe, so I had to order one for myself. So I ordered one for myself, I got it in, I plugged it in my system, and immediately after listening, I thought to myself, this isn't a very significant difference. I think this thing's gonna go back at the end of the 30 day trial. But then I got think, but then I started thinking back to what John said in that forum post, that basically the most advantage to using the LA4 is going to be at lower volumes because the difference in the sound to noise ratio performance is most appreciated at lower volumes. Where if you're playing with the DAC3L or the HTC, where the volume pot is at 11 o'clock or greater, you're pretty much on par with the performance that you're gonna get with the LA4. So I listened very quietly to the LA4 and then the DAC3L. And in that instance, I would say, yes, it is clearer, there's more resolution. I felt like there was more detail using the LA4, which honestly is good for my ears. And my wife actually liked that a lot because she, listens at lower volumes. And she even told me, she didn't know what changed in the system, although the, the uh, LA4 is, is kind of on display and, and you know is a new piece of hardware. So I don't know, she, I mean, she wasn't paying attention. But anyway, she told me, hey, something changed and, and I, I like this. She likes to listen at lower volumes. So that to me was like, okay, this is the advantage of using the LA4 is at the lower volumes and listening to extremely low volume all the way to extremely high volume, I never felt like the sound characteristic ever changed when on the LA4, whereas with the 3L, I felt like when you got closer to the 10, 11 o'clock marker, that's when the resolution, the clarity really started to flesh itself out from the preamp. That being said, the DAC3 portion in the meat and potatoes of the DAC3L itself is extremely resolving, extremely clear, extremely transparent. It is very unforgiving and therefore can sometimes sound dry depending on what you're listening to, what you're listening with, the room that you're listening in. So this is not a smooth DAC that is going to gloss over or fix problems in your existing audio chain. If you have a very high performance system with a very well created room, this is just going to flesh out and bring out the best of that. But if there are problems that you are trying to solve within your audio system, this is not going to smooth them over. So if you're very confident in your system, yeah, this is a great deck to have because it's going to just give you the full on reproduction of the signal without any embellishment, without any augmentation or mutation to it. It is truly a very neutral, very transparent source. Now back to the LA4 really quick. Now I couldn't really tell a significant difference when the volume was higher. And yeah, I like to listen a little louder. I like to have the music a little more in my face. So I honestly thought, what is this going to do for me that is going to convince me to keep this $2,500 preamplifier? And the first thing about this preamp is that it is extremely satisfying when you change the volume. There are relays in this thing, and I had the Shit Freya Plus, which also has relays, and it was actually a lot louder than this. But there's something about the tuning of the LA4 relays that is just extremely satisfying when you change the volume. It's kind of like the difference between like just like a Honda Civic with a pimped out exhaust on it versus like a Maserati. Like, yeah, they're both loud and they're both 
car noises, whatever. But there's a very distinct difference in that sound when it's going. So let me just play a little bit of the LA4 changing volume and you can tell you can tell me if it's satisfying or not. I think it's chef's kiss beautiful. All right, here we go. All right, we're back. Are you not entertained? I think that's awesome. Anyway, so for me personally, as someone who's trying to get into this reviewer space that has a lot of audio components that come in and out, that likes to try a lot of new things, that honestly may be looking at a few different DACs in the near future, this product is very valuable to me because I didn't feel like it changed the sound at all over the certain volume. Once it got to its peak amount or peak least delta between the two on paper. And it didn't change the sound when I was listening to lower volumes or higher volumes. That to me tells me that this product is so neutral that there is no flavor of its own being put into the signal. It is just purely attenuating that volume and that is all it is doing. It is not injecting any sort of additional flavor, character, or anything else into that signal. I don't know if I'd use the word true to source or true to the music, but it is true to the signal. And when you think about it, that is really what a pre-amplifier should be doing. So in that instance, I think that it is invaluable that it just gets out of the way of what you're throwing at it. And these things are just chock full of features as well. Like the LA4 has a mono output, like what other preamp has that? It also has balance controls, which is pretty cool. It has touchscreen display, which is actually very responsive and nice. The screen is actually really nice and you can dim it, which is beautiful. I wish you could dim the LEDs on the DAC3 because it uses those blue LEDs, which I hate so very, very much. So I put these little dimming thing, little dimming stickers that don't, are aren't actually stickers, but they, they dim the lights and then so the blue light doesn't like, oh my God, in your face. Highly recommend that if you have one of these or you have any other product that has a blinding blue light in your eye. I'll put a link below in the comments for uh, those stickers and where you can get them. They're pretty cheap, they're like a couple bucks. And on the DAC3L you got two digital coax ins, two optical ins, USB in, a analog in actually, you can even use it as a standalone preamp, which kind of weird because the meat and potatoes of the device is the DAC, not the preamp, but if you want to, it's there. Then two sets of unbalanced outs and one set of balanced outs. And internally, you can take the hood of the chassis off and there are actually volume attenuation pads that you can set to zero dB, negative 10 dB, or negative 20 dB. And Benchmark recommends that you set those pads to whatever allows you to listen at that 11 o'clock position on the DAC3L to get the maximum resolution when it comes to the output. And it's also got mute polarity control, home theater bypass, DAC mode bypass. It has the 20 dB reduction and reinstatement, which is pretty cool because you know, if someone comes in or someone wants to talk to you, whatever, you know, you can hit that 20 dB cut, boop, and that cuts the sound quite a bit. 20 dB is very, a big difference in the sound. So you, no, you know, talk to the person, whatever, do whatever you need to do, and boop, right back to where you were. It does DSD, it tells you what the signal that's coming in is, which is pretty sweet. So, you know, if you have something that says, hey, this is 24 bit 192, the deck will tell you if it's actually 24 bit 192 or if it's actually 24 bit 
88.2. So really cool, really cool devices. Like I said, I like Benchmark a lot. I like their products a lot. I recommend them very highly. So I like the DAC3L, I like the LA4, and honestly, as good as the preamp stage is in the DAC3L, yeah, you could get away without the LA4 or uh, other external preamp because it really is a great device. And, and it's just one of those things that Benchmark's just known for is making a really high quality product for not a crazy amount of money. So that's gonna do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, drop a comment below, Check the links below in the description for other ways to help support the channel, including my Patreon for whatever you want to donate a month or whatever you want to give to me a month, whatever. You can help support this channel and it's really appreciated. So that's going to do it for me. I'll see you in the next one.